going over my trading view setup, I'll start by briefly going through the setup process, exploring the different options that they have, and then I'll go through my actual trading view setup. And I'll show you pretty much all the indicators that I use on a daily basis. Now, I'm not going to be able to explain every single indicator in one video. It would just be too much content. Um, but what I will do is uh, the, some of the more complex ones I'll, I'll talk about pretty briefly. Now, timestamps will be placed at the bottom of this video. So just skip through this section if you want to jump right into the trading view setup. So looking at these plans right now, you have the Pro, the Pro Plus, and the Premium. Now, the only real difference to care about is the number of indicators per chart and the number of charts per window. So I like the Pro Plus because I think it's kind of the perfect middle ground between functionality and price. It's only about $24 a month and I get 10 indicators. I don't really need 25. Five is too little. So for me, this is what's perfect, right? I'll use about four charts in one, in one tab. I don't really need more than that. If you want more than that, you can opt for the premium plan. If you want less than this, you can go for the pro plan. There's also the free plan as well. It, it basically is super bare bones. I think you can only have two or three indicators, but that's totally fine as well. It's completely free. Now, regardless of the plan you pick, one of these three or, or the free one, you do need real-time market data. If you don't have real-time market data, everything is going to be delayed by 15 minutes, right? So all your indicators are going to be skewed. It's going to look different from mine. It's not going to be real, right? It's going to be 15 minutes prior. So to do that, scroll to the bottom, right? After you sign in, you sign up, make an account, choose a plan, scroll to the bottom of this, right? And uh, press subscribe to real-time markets. Now, once you do this, just take the top three, right? I use ARCA, NYSE, and NASDAQ because this is going to cover 99% of the uh, data and charts that you need to use, right? So it's going to cover pretty much everything you need. It's only six bucks a month, so it's not super expensive. Um, and everything else, I mean, you, you could get these if you're trading um, these type of currencies or, or, or indices or stocks, but I don't, right? So these this is going to cover pretty much everything I need. Now uh, that we've got that covered, let's actually jump into the chart. So before you get confused, these horizontal lines are um, just manual lines that are drawn, right? So all I do is I'll find a key spot on the chart, right? So I might mark this area over here and uh, press this little plus sign on the price axis and draw a horizontal line, all right? So that's all it is, it's done manually, right? And the same goes for trend lines, right? So if I'm, draw I'm trying to draw a trend line um, starting from over here and going down over here, all I do is I, I press this little, this little line over here and, and draw it, right? So it's very, very simple and it's done manually, right? Whereas indicators are done automatically. And before I get into that as well, I do wanna show you my time frames. So on the top left, press this little arrow down, right? And select the time frames that you wanna use on a daily basis. I tend to use the five minute, the 15 minute, the hourly, the four hour, and the daily. That's what I use primarily, so I, I have them starred, so it's easy to switch to them without having to um, type them in every time. Now, just for a rundown, I use the daily, the four hour, and the hourly to plot my key levels. So, right, so this, this level over here, this level over here was drawn on the four hour, right? Now, if I were to execute, it would be on the 15 minute and the five minute, right? So that's where I'm actually um, looking and spying my intraday trades, right? Now, um, let's hop into the actual indicators. So three um, EMAs I'm gonna add, right? So I'm gonna search EMA, uh, moving average exponential. I'm gonna add three of these. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press the little settings icon and change the length, right? So right now it defaults to nine. I'm gonna change that to eight. Uh, I also use the 21 and the 50, okay? Now these numbers are not random. These numbers um, run off a of Fibonacci sequence. So that's why you tend to see a lot of traders use it. Um, they're just well-respected levels um, in nature and, and they, they're, they're brought over to, to trading. I'm not really sure why, but it just tends to work pretty well. Now, quick rundown. You'll tend to notice that the eight EMA hugs the price action more so than the 21 EMA. And likewise, likewise with the 21 EMA, the 21 EMA hugs the price action more so than the 50 EMA, right? And this is because it incorporates less data, right? So I'll use 
um, the AEMA on a strongly trending upward stock, right? So it's very aggressive move up. I'm going to be bouncing the stock off the AEMA. Now, if it's a, a more of a softer, less aggressive move like this, I might be bouncing it off of the, the 50 EMA or even the 21 EMA, right? So when it's a more aggressive move like this, then I'm going to be bouncing it off of the 8 EMA. And it's a, if it's a less aggressive move, then I'm going to be bouncing it off of the 21 or the 50, right? Now, I'm going to add two more indicators. I'm going to add the moving average, two of them. I'm going to add the length to 100 on the first one. And on the second one, I'm going to edit this one to 200. Okay. Now, the difference between the MA and the EMA is that the EMA uh, weights the inputs, the, the, the prices, more so on recent data. Whereas the MA is more um, equal, right? It equally weights all the data. So it, it is no emphasis on, on, on recent data. Okay. I'll use... The EMA is primarily for scalping. I'll use the MAs um, as a sentiment builder, right? So if I'm trying to gauge the sentiment for the day, I'll use the 200 or 100 MA. These are also key levels, right? They're also very, very key levels. So you can also use them for scalping. But the EMAs are, are what I tend to use um, for day trading. And the MAs are what I tend to use on swing trading, okay? Now, this might also seem very, very um, confusing, right? Because there's so many different lines in this chart right now. So what I'll do um, every single day and every single chart I look at is I'll remove or, or I'll hide the indicators that I don't see are relevant for the chart. So right now, the 200 MA, the 100 MA, and even the, the 50 EMA are not very relevant to this, to this chart. So I might quickly hide them, right? And I'll rotate through these to see what is relevant and I'll keep them on if they are, okay? So now it, it looks a lot more, um, less wonky, right? Okay. The next indicator I'm gonna use is gonna be the volume indicator. Now this is another uh, very simple indicator to have and it's very important for you to use, right? Now, if you're taking a breakout play, you wanna see um, that there is high volume backing that move, right? Likewise, if you're taking a breakdown play, you wanna see, okay, is there volume backing this move on the downside, right? So it's very important to see. But just seeing it like this is, is good. But what you can also do is you can add a moving average to this. And this is a price moving average, right? So add a volume MA in the style section, input 20. And now every time the stock, the price, uh, the, the volume breaks this moving average, that would conclude that the volume is high. And when it's below that moving average, the volume is low. So it's a very simple and easy way to gauge volume. It's very important to have this up because it's, it's just super simple, right? So you don't have to compare it to the last candle. You can just look at it and you have this MA to do it for you, okay? Now, the third indicator that I want to add is going to be the regular VWAP, right? VWAP is volume weighted average price. Now, the VWAP I'll use intraday um, and uh, primarily on the 5 and 15 minute candles. And what I'm also going to, or time frames, and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to remove the band fill the lower band and the upper band, okay? Now, these uh, the VWAP is, is well-respected during the day, um, primarily used for bounces after bounces or rejects after 10.30 or 11, right? That's when it tends to be more accurate, all right? Now, the fourth indicator I'm gonna add is going to be the pivot point, right? The pivot point indicator is um, something I don't use on a day-to-day -day basis anymore, um, but it's, it's very useful for new traders. Okay, they tend to be very res well respected uh, support and resistance levels, right? They work very well and they're done manually. Okay, it might not be entirely accurate, but it's it's done manually. And as a new trader, it's good to have, right? It's very good to see. Okay, it's it's you know it's approaching S one, so I might um, want to exit my short position right now, right? Something like that. Um, now, what you can do is press the settings icon and disable the um, number of pivot backs and change it to one, right? So if you do this, it's gonna remove all of these historical pivots and it's just gonna show you the most recent pivot. And that'll remove more clutter so it's, it's less um, complicated in your chart, okay? Now, 
um, some other indicators you can add, it's going to be the RSI, right? The RSI is, is useful when you're day trading. It's also useful, extremely useful when you're when you're swinging, right? If you're looking for, um, you know, you're trying to buy a stock in a dip, you buy it when it's um, oversold, which would be when it's it's below 30 on the RSI. And if you want to short a stock or, or sell a position, you want to sell when it's overbought above 75 or 80, right? That would be considered oversold or overbought rather. Um, so this is very useful when you're scalping. It's also extremely useful when you're swinging. Okay. The next indicator is MACD. There are a ton of videos on this. Um, you can watch that and, and have it explained to you. It's very simple. It's very easy. It's also great to use um, with RSI. Okay. So you can use RSI and MACD together and they work very, very well. Okay. Now the last indicator I'm going to show you is a little bit more complicated but it's, it's a great indicator to use. Um, if you're more advanced, even if you're a new trader, it's, it's important for you to learn. Um, and I think it's great. Okay. So let's hop over to the hourly and we're going to add the VP VR, the volume profile visible range. Okay. Now let's scroll out a little bit here. Now the volume on the bottom, right? This volume that we added before, that is related to time. So it's showing the number of shares transacted during the candle, right? So we're on the five, we're on the hourly right now. So every candle on the price, and every candle on the volume is showing the number of um, stocks transacted um, within that time period, within that hour, okay? Now, VPVR is very, very similar to volume, but it shows volume not based upon the um, time, but based upon the price, okay? So this red line over here, this is known as the point of control. So it represents the highest level with the number of the highest number of buyers and sellers. Okay. So whenever the price hits this level, that's the highest volume. Now these levels of uh, these high and, and low volume spots are essentially built in support and resistance lines because they're pockets of supply and demand. Now high volume um, areas like this area are going to represent, you know, significant areas of demand. Whereas low volume areas don't really have a lot of stocks transacted through them. So they're going to be very insignificant levels. Now, when we leave high areas of, of, uh, of um, volume and move into low areas, it's going to have a hard time. The stock is going to have a hard time stopping, right? It tends to move primarily between high and, and uh, you know, between high notes, right? So this note is high and this note over here is very high. Okay, so once it breaks this level over here, the next key area it has is going to be the next highest area of, uh, of uh, volume, right? That's going to be this note over here. Okay, so it's very, very important to see. Um, it's mostly used during swing trading, but I think it could also be used, you know, even looking at, at time frames as small as the hourly, right? If you're trying to pinpoint um, day trades with, with large moves and you're trying to hold it throughout the day, Use the VPVR because you can find you know, significant areas of supply and demand in the chart. And you can also see, okay, you know, if it breaks this area over here, it likely has room all the way to the next um, key area of, uh, of volume, right? And that's going to be over here. Now, I pretty much covered uh, every single indicator that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, if I have any more that I forgot to, I'll, I'll definitely leave it in the description. Um, but that's pretty much everything that I use. So uh, hopefully this helped you and, and let me know uh, what you guys think. If you want more of this stuff, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Um, thank you again. And, and I look forward to hearing from you.